Hello and welcome back. I'm Melinda Bigley, Baby Lock Educator, and today I wanted to show you guys how to do a couple of things. This is going to look similar to you um, as to what we did, I think, yesterday or so. But there are a few little changes, um, not only aesthetically, but also something that I want you to see in IQ. So we're going to close that. I'm going to save that to memory. And um, let's start over again. So let's go into IQ. And as you'll remember, we used a uh, shamrock to um, create the, the little shape. And then, so the big shape was shamrocks and there were shamrocks inside. Today we're gonna do um, shamrocks inside of a heart. Obviously you can figure that out, but it's just something to be a little bit different for you. So I'm going to pull up a green so we can fill the inner portion of that first of this heart. Um, I'm going to grab the dark green and I'm going to leave that on the satin um, oops and apply so you have to have your paint bucket so if you're new to IQ when you apply something to a shape whether it's a line property which is up here or a fill property which is down here you need to use your paint bucket to apply it to the entirety of its to the whole perimeter here so let's say I which which you saw me do it was on the pencil and if I just do that it's just a pin prick or I can draw but if I were to do the paint bucket and I and I clicked on, okay, that's not gonna work. If I if I want to do a fill and I want to click on the whole thing, that'll fill the entire thing. Um, but if I'm doing a fill and I'm drawing like that, it's obviously just um, doing that in segments. Okay, so what we'll do is we will grab a um, we'll grab our shamrock and we're gonna first thing we're gonna do is side is it down. Um, yesterday I removed that little stem on the shamrock today. I'm not going to do that just to give it a little bit, um, a little bit of fun there. And what I'm going to do here is duplicate and rotate so that they are, um, all a little bit different. Now you can also do different sizes, um, and, and things like that to give it a little bit of fun. And we will apply the, um, the line property. And I tried a couple different line properties. Um, but really, when you're doing something this small, it's, it's hard to... Um, even, your, even the satin stitch looks like it's kind of smooshed in there, even at its smallest setting. Um, so I think I might do one more. And, um, and we can go in and, and like I said, I, I rotated one of them. You can rotate them. You don't have to, that's up to you. Um, but what I do want to do is show you guys, um, that we are going to increase the size of our satin stitch in the next section. And we're going to decrease the size of our shamrock satin stitch. Okay. So the other thing I want to do is to select a different, you'll, you'll notice that the fill in this, because there is no fill inside of these shamrocks, it just goes straight to inside of the, um, the color that you select for your fill there. So I'm gonna go, not what I was planning on doing, but that's not too bad either. Um, but what we'll do is we'll go around and just add this light color fill in all these little guys and when you do do something you need to correct obviously you just hit this little back button I use it as frequently as I use anything else in here um, and I guess you know you, you could refer to it as a mistake but it's just part of the creative process and I'm gonna see something real quick right here okay um, so what I want to do now is let's go forward and I want you to see what it actually shows up as, as far as the thickness of your satin stitches. You can do this, but honestly, when this stitches out like this, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty sloppy looking. Now, if you want to use a higher weight bobbin thread, which is, um, or a lower, what is that? The lower the number, the thicker it is. So use a higher number bobbin thread. So 60 weight 
bobbin thread, and um, you can you can get good results with that because it's a narrower diameter, and they're they'll make uh, they take up less space basically. But what I want to show you is how to reduce in mass. Okay, so when you're selecting, by, by, by that I mean you've got all these little shamrocks that you've got in here, and you don't want to go through. If you do this, you have to go through each one individually, and you can't see it, but there's a little red box that'll go around and select all those. Okay, well, each of these, all I have to do is to click that little button, and it will allow me to... Um, It'll allow me to lessen the size of those satin stitches just like that. Okay, so now let's see something. So if I move around and I click on the satin stitch that we've got here, let's see what happens if we increase this. Now I've not used the button right here that will shrink, that will um, select these little shamrocks inside. Okay, so what happened was when I clicked on the, on the, um, it's a little chain basically. So what it does is it ties all these together so you don't have to skip through the entire thing. Okay, so, and I'm just gonna go through here and show you also that you can change your colors right here in your editing section. You can pretty much do most of almost all, if not all of what you need, aside from adding another shape and bringing it in, in this editing part. If you need to add something else, you can. You, it won't forget what you've done in your editing portion. Um, it just, um, it will actually just let you add to that. So um, if you go back, you can just add to that. You can add another shape. You can add more shamrocks, whatever it is. So if I want to go in here and I want to pull in whatever, um, you can add different things. The, the other thing that I wanted to show you is when you go to this little guy, you can see this is something I haven't discussed um, or I don't discuss very often. If you, if you look at this little button here, you'll see it's your empty closed shapes. Here you've got the closed shapes without, and this is just the line property. Here is just the fill property. So while it may seem silly, you do have those to choose from. So if you wanted to, you could just go to this and you've already got a filled in shape without a line property. If I go to this one, I've got my line properties and my fill properties already in that. So if I wanted to, I could bring something like that right into, into the screen here without having to go through um, adding them and you just can worry about changing the colors and things like that. So the big thing I wanted you to see today was how to group. And that's what this little guy is right here. That's what that little chain is. That's allowing me to group these shapes right in here. Okay. So now all of this is grouped together. Now, if I see that it's also grouped my perimeter line property into that, I can go around until I get to go through these and there's probably a better way to do that. But now it's just the outside perimeter and I can affect that on its own, okay? So now when you set this, this is what you end up with. And while um, this is very similar to yesterday, I did not talk about the grouping um, and how important it is. And the reason I left these little tails on here so that you could see when you reduce the um, stitch width of your line properties like this on a tiny little shape, a lot of times I'll use a triple stitch, but you can use your satin stitch and still have it stitch out very nicely. Um, and if you want to reduce that, like I said, go up in number uh, with your bobbin thread. And you can even use a 7511 if if you feel like that's going to help you. I, I don't know if it, you know, I've, I've never done a microscopic test to see if it really matters. If I use a 9411 um, or a 70 or a 9412. Yeah, 9014. Or if I use a 7511. I use a 9014 for pretty much everything. I get that question a lot too. I pretty much use a 9014 for everything unless I'm doing something on a very specific fabric like organza or satin or um, silk, something like that. Okay, so just a few more little fun things. Um, I did have some questions. 
on that and I wanted to give you the grouping to add to your fun. And I do know there's a special lady in Texas that might just stitch this out who's already done several fun things. And um, oh, and I did want to say that we will be doing a fun live this week in So Bless Quilting and Embroidery Facebook group um, at three o'clock Pacific Standard Time. And it's going to be dedicated just to binding. So if you struggle with binding, if you need to perfect your binding, um, we're going to do a live dedicated just to that. And it'll be a very rudimentary, um, repetitive, this is what you do. And it's just one of those things where you do it over and over and over and over again. And it's far simpler than, um, than you first think when you're beginning quilting or you're um, some people just don't like to bind and that's fine. There's people that actually do binding. I have a friend that does all the binding for a lot of quilts and they pay her to do it. Um, and that's great, but it is not as difficult as it seems. So I will show you some, some little tricks to that. Okay. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Um, please do like subscribe and share so we can keep growing our, uh, YouTube channel, which will allow us to keep doing all this uh, fun educational stuff on these wonderful machines. Have a terrific day, everyone, and thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.